when I press go live, we are going live now. Let's do it, man. In the Trenches with Ryan Roxy. Hello, folks, and welcome to another edition of In the Trenches uh, podcast with Ryan Roxy. This is a live stream podcast. That's what we have been doing since we have all been holed up in either our uh, bedrooms, our son's bedrooms, wherever you are in the world, you're in some sort of room, probably one that you own, and you are watching us right now. And it couldn't be better. We are excited today. This, by far, is our most anticipated guest on the live stream in the trenches podcast so far. I can tell. How do I know that? Because of the thumbs up that you people gave it on our YouTube before you even saw the show. We had a record 20 something thumbs up. So I guess that's something to talk about. I guess that's something we can all take back with us. Um, today's guest, I've known her for, I'd say over two thirds of her life. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, I've known her for a long, long time. We've grown up together. Um, she's obviously grown to do some amazing uh, things with music, with acting, with comedy. Um, but I'm going to let her talk all about it. And uh, when I introduce her, um, you people, I want you to sit back, relax, and listen. If you are watching this or listening to this on either Apple or iTunes or some sort of streaming platform of your choice, you can always head on over to the YouTube to see the video version of it because on these live stream podcasts, we will talk a little bit with me and my guests, and then we will open it up to the forum, to the comments room for people to ask their own questions if they like. So thank you all for showing up so far. And uh, without further ado, may I welcome today's guest, Miss Calico Cooper. I got weird. I got weird. And she said, appears. Like, yeah. I said miss. And it's I'm, Mrs. Is, is, is there a Ms? I don't is, What is it now? I don't know. I like to stay as ambiguous as possible. What's my name? What's my marital status? We don't know. I was like, Miss Cal. No, Mrs. Oh, God. I had Hello, one chance Callie. and you blew it. Hey, I just know doing? Calico Cooper. What's happening? I'm just chilling at, uh, at my folks' house in Phoenix, all hunkered down in the bunker. You are in Phoenix, Arizona, man. I am I in am. Stockholm, Sweden. Our team of uh, illustrious producers are all spread out all over the world. We have Arkansas. We have Canada. We have the UK. We're everywhere, man. And the audience watching right now is pretty diverse as well. So uh, just real quick, because I don't know if I told you before. I didn't tell you any of the real game rules, but this is a C word free environment. We do not mention the C word, um, you know, C nineteen word. Yeah, that word. So it's just a safe place for us. It's a safe haven because you're pretty much bombarded with it as soon as you get out. But the one question I do like to ask the guests that do come on the live stream is, how are you coping just being indoors? when you're used to not be? I do not think you could be with, obviously, a better family, a better, you know, group of people. Um, there is a lot of eccentricities in this house, <laughs> so you're never bored. Um, so politically correct, always. <laughs> always. Where do you think I get it from? Uh, when you said the C word, I thought you meant you can't say Cooper. I was like, well, this is going to be short. <laughs> no, um, no, that is the other C word, isn't it? I didn't even think of that C word. <laughs> yep. Uh, but no, so it's, uh, you know, it's, it's sort of like, um, it's sort of like a fun house. Every room in this house, something else is going on because people are, are sort of coping with it differently. So it's like in this room, the closet's being cleaned out. And in this room, I'm, I'm going to build a new stereo system. And in this room, I was like, I'm going to go through all of my old costumes. It's just like, it's really been, uh, it's really big. You, you choose your own adventure, really. What, what room <laughs> so, are you in actually right now? Because uh, I, I'm digging on the courage. This looks like the, the teenage hangout room. It, you know what? So this uh, room is technically the radio room. Uh, all the walls are are kind of like padded and stuff. And this is where um, my dad does uh, some radio and he does interviews and stuff. There's a light box. And so, girl. Helps my skin. Oh, you're looking good. You're looking good. The hair's looking cool, man. Your hair's like long. Looking it's long. Lo look, it's blonde too now. Wow. Uh, I, is it is it 
pretty much like on a percentage level, one to a hundred percent, how much of it is, is uh, from China and how much of it is. 75% was grown in house. <laughs> okay. Good and job. then the, the blonde pieces um, I believe are Italian. Okay. From a nice Italian family. They needed good the hair. money. <laughs> yeah. Good hair. Got the good stock. I myself am going for the Eric Singer vibe a la 1989 to present day and it's kind of like a i don't know it kind of looks like a, a wigwam or a tp some sort of vibe like that I, <laughs> they were just saying you know after all of this is done you're gonna see what people actually look like i'm like like hell you will i'm on top yeah. of this <laughs> no I, I i mean here's the thing i've been doing these um live streams i've been doing a lot of these podcasts as well as little mini concerts on sunday and i just did one on sunday and for those of you that are keeping score at home i'm yeah this is the same shirt yeah and it's what it is t technically tuesday so if you're watching this on a thursday i'm probably wearing this shirt as well so yeah i'm not i'm not wearing any <laughs> pants right now so who is these days i don't i don't, I don't think any of those guys Dave Spade, Stephen Colbert, all those guys are shooting out of their houses now. I think it's like it, it, it's all business of, you know, we only up. exist from the waist up right now. Yeah, yeah, That's it. Sure. And I'm fine with that. And it's all vacation on the way down. <laughs> no, I'm actually wearing socks today. I'm proud. I got out of the house for about 10 minutes. Oh, not me. No, I don't have any sockless. All right. All right. Nice shot of the feet. It's Thank good. dirty too. Nice. <laughs> for all you oh, Ryan. <laughs> What did you know that I'm somebody just told me a couple days ago? They go, You know, that you're on a foot fetish website, and I went, What? <laughs> and they said, I was looking up something for like some promo we were doing, and they said, You're on Wiki Feet. We all have dreams, and I've I've excelled mine. I'm done. Of, I'm, they they I'm, come true, please. Uh, different stages of life. I was expecting. Uh, well, like I, I'm sort of privy to like older foot uh, pages, you know, granny foot. Mm -hmm. Have you hashtag granny? Oh, foot? granny <laughs> grannyfoot.com. Right yeah, <laughs> I'm aware of it. Specialized craggy foot onions. <laughs> oh my, <laughs> onions.com. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. So, so did you like the way that I didn't even introduce you from any sort of bands or? performances. I just said you were a comedian. I said you had done great things with music and you've been a performer, but now I sh think I should probably let the cat out of the bag a little bit. Cause I just wanted you to be known as like Calico Cooper, like share, like, like yeah. one well, name, I, I but two names. The, <laughs> I go on the records now is just Calico. Like I'm dreaming big that like, that will just be like enough. Like, like Britney, it should be Why is Madonna seal. Steal. <laughs> so here's the thing, man. I I would be remiss. I did say that I knew you two thirds of your life. I joined the band in 1996, right? I joined. Mm -hmm. Oh, like it. The lean in is happening. Yeah. I knew it. Yeah, you knew, knew it. what happened. She had to do it. It was in the script. <laughs> <laughs> so I joined the band in '96, which would have made you. A toddler um <laughs> but not oh, much God. more than that no that was a different band and that picture right there just so you know calico and oh. i have played in other bands besides uh cooper's band um that was a band called glam nation which we will talk about later and we will talk about that outfit not yes. particularly yours but mine more well, maybe yours both. Well. i mean i yeah i <laughs> i'm pathetically still have that corset so we can just they were choices that. they were choices we made choices <laughs> so I joined in 96. Uh, you were the kid that was hanging around the rehearsal. 15, I think 15 yeah, years old. Around that 15 years old. And then a couple of years later, you're in the band. You're joined up with Alice Cooper. You are now the lead performer, you know, and was there, was our first tour together, Brutal Planet. Was it? It was. I, uh, I'd come out uh, for the circus one the uh what was the circus one Ro Remember it was the, the rock and roll carnival rock and roll carnival so i had come out to kind of see uh for a while my dad had been talking about you know i really want to 
put together like a new concept, like something that I've, I've never done. And, and we had been talked about for a while. And he said, you know, when you graduate high school, is that something that you might be interested in, in doing? And I was like, well, I kind of planned to go to LA and I really wanted to, you know, study and then do TV and film. And, I, you know, the more I thought about it, I go, well, let me just see if that's for me. So we went on the rock and roll carnival tour. And uh, I remember I got to play a clown and it was a mask and a jumper and the whole thing. And it was just, I think it was, um, it went viral. I just sort of, you know, the first time I was on stage, I just went, well, yeah, no, that's what I'm going to do instead of what I had planned on doing. So <laughs> I um, <laughs> I uh, came home and my dad says, we well, are natural on stage. You don't panic. You get the beats, you get the comedy, you get the timing. Uh, would you want to come do Brutal Planet? And I thought, yeah. And so we created that show you know, kind of from the ground up, we, we hadn't really had a format of what it was going to look like, except for we got this cool band and this post-apocalyptic theme and what fits in this world right. and, and yeah. go to hell fit and the nurse fit and all this other stuff fit. And now that it's been so many years, when I think about the potential of where, you know, being so new, I was like, yes, okay, yes, whatever, <laughs> you know. And I played the roles exactly like I had seen them done uh, from before. your mom right I right mean, from in, in my way. mom and yeah and then i mean that's that's pretty hard to was to, there ever uh, an official passing of the torch oh of, god you really want that's this is a, a terrible embarrassing story but that's um, exactly I'm, what we want on this show is terrible <laughs> i'm uh, embarrassing stories i'm 18 years old and we're doing go to hell and my dad says well i want you to do the um the whip stuff the whip bit and i said okay and it's i'm hard to verbalize to your dad hey dad i'm 18 i don't know how to use a bull whip <laughs> in a sadomasochism sort of way yeah that's not really in my forte <laughs> um i just graduated spanish 201 so i don't know how that works and um the bondage whipping i you know and i yeah so i um i faked my way through it uh, for the first couple of rehearsals. And then it, you could tell that my dad had sent my mom as a, as a peacekeeper. So she came up and she says, well, honey, do, do you want me to teach you how to use the bullwhip? And I was like, yes. So she took me out into the alley behind the web theater in Phoenix, where we were rehearsing the show. Get and out. she taught me how to use the whip and how like when you go out it's got to be slow and then pull back quick and that's what makes the wow noise and i mean i goosed myself in the face and in the you know crotch and in the everything it sounds, and sounds right out of a disney film really it's like you it, know where the, the mother whale and the baby whale and he teaches them how to you know. <laughs> teach me how to swim teach me, teach how me how the whip <laughs> take it and you snap <laughs> let me learn your ways <laughs> <laughs> so mom you sent in the professionals so that was sort of a, a passing of the torch on to you passing and, of the whip yeah yeah, yeah. And, and then and then years later your mom wanted the whip back she asked she's like give it she's, yeah. you've had it long enough, enough. yeah <laughs> so uh but, but yeah, that case yeah <laughs> that that it that actually is true folks that it went from cheryl being the main performer through the 70s and probably part of the 80s as well and then calico taking the reins and then having an era because it wasn't just brutal planet it was the all the all the different eras that we did we did i think you were even in all the even the ones that were supposed to be stripped down bare uh, bones bare bones <laughs> bare <laughs> Don't never forget bare bones. No. <laughs> bare bones is just another way to just say, well, well one less yeah. tour truck, <laughs> one less tour, you know, we can we can all squeeze in one tour there van. Was like, there was like a trash can on stage and I was just in it. <laughs> like waiting. And then I come up. No, well, you had that okay. era. That's just, <laughs> that's a bare bones era. And Basically, then you had the uh, seven faces of death era as well. The Am theater I... of death. Yeah. Theater yeah. Of death. Theater yeah, of yeah, death. Yeah. Um, and... But there was a, all kinds of stuff in between there. I mean, we did dragon town. We did dragon town. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, it was bare bones. There was pff, I just came across a whole closet full of um, 
of tour itineraries and I, uh, a friend of mine made me the nicest gift. She took all of my itineraries and she went through them and put on a giant map, little pins everywhere that I have been. Wow, and the entire nice thing, thing I know it was really sweet. And, and the entire map looked like the plague. <laughs> like I have been up you, in your business. You, yeah. A basically of time. you could show, you could watch CNN in that map and it's the same exact map. Now you, wait like, a you second. can trace where I've been. Wait a second. <laughs> could you be the host monkey? <laughs> Patient the host zero. <laughs> um, so you went through all these eras. It, it did end at one point um, b- before I got back in the band in mm-hmm. 2012. So after that, obviously the performance bug was still in you. You needed, you had it with you. And luckily enough, you were able to sort of form all that energy and, and combine it with uh, Chuck Garrick with Beast of Blanco. And that's basically, or is, I don't want to say how it happened, but. Yeah, I mean, it It really, it, this all kind of clams up together because, you know, we all work together and doing, you know, these Glam Nation things and, and we would oh, do, right. um, we would also do, you know, golf tournaments and we would do charity events and we would all kind of sing together and cut up, you know, on tour on nights off. We would do, before it was known as the Goon Squad, just, you know, a, a dink around thing and we would go and play these these clubs and stuff, um, no, known under many names as I am. <laughs> Um, but we uh, we would go do that stuff. And, um, you know, I think uh, starting off with Bisto was really sort of a um, it was a germination of an idea where it was like, you know, I don't really know what this is going to look like. But I know that Chuck and I play uh, sort of a, a Sid and Nancy really well. We, we do a, a, a natural born killers really well. Right. California and, with a K. Yeah. With, with the K. Yeah, Let's be clear. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how that started. Yeah. Well, I, by you saying that, it just made me think could if your vocal debut in your first time ever singing, because now you sing and perform in Bisto mm-hmm. Wanko, um, but before that, was Glam Nation basically your first sort of stab at singing and performing at the same time? Yeah, I think it, uh, you know, I did a lot of Alice records as a kid, you know, lending like a little kid voice to songs like I did um, the song Wind Up Toy. I was the the little girl's voice in that and like all what that stuff. What album was that? Woo, everyone's going to kill me. Fact check. Uh, Fact, Fact check. check. <laughs> I think it was, it was Hey Stupid. Okay. Apropos I'll buy that. That, I, yeah. that I don't know. I should have said it with authority. Yeah, and then you, you always got to stay it with was on authority. Hey Stupid. Anyway, <laughs> um, no, but uh, it was, yeah, Wind Up Toy, and I, I did a couple things like that. But live, I remember you asking me, you go, hey, you know, uh, we're going to do this uh, this jam thing, and would you, you know, come sing Cherry Bomb or, or 18, whatever. And I was like, ah, I kind of feel like a little bit, but prior to doing it, I was like, I kind of feel like a little dorky, like, I'm singing my dad's song, you know, and um the first time I did it, I realized that like, Oh wait, I do it like me. And I, and there's a really different way that I do it and I have a whole different thing. So yeah, like it was probably Glam Nation was the first time that I stood up out of, out out of character just as Calico doing, you know, pretty much anything like that. So. Well, we actually have a picture of Glam Nation. It was up earlier, but maybe we could revisit oh, that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what a night that was. Um, for some reason, I decided to wear just underwear, and I think it was it had to have been a Halloween show, even though every single show with Glam Nation was sort of like Halloween. But I think I yeah. wanted to be a roller derby girl. Boy, I mean, again, I'll, I'll buy it. You Are you wearing tube socks, or what's happening? Um, I'm wearing those ones. I was trying to wear those sexy socks that go slightly above the knee. And as you can tell, I do not pull it off. But then again, then again, I'm looking at your uh, vibe. Was that one of the – because let's please take that picture off now. Okay, thank you. No, you had said – you guys had the, those great names and I don't remember what the formula for the name was, but it was Peter like Kensington. You had to take your middle name and then something kind of clever, but it, everybody's middle name was basically their first name. But what was right. Your- Except for me, because I go, Oh, like 
I'm going to do like Zane is my middle name. And they're like, oh, I could have done like, you know, Zane, uh, whatever, Buckingham Palace. I think it was your middle name and like something to do with Britain because you guys put on those fake British accents. Absolutely. Um, but I think I ended up going as Jamie Crackpipe. <laughs> Well, that's a choice too, and um, but I think I think that was under your tutelage. I think you were like, "Why not Jamie Crackpipe?" I'm like, "Why not?" Yeah, th those were two things that were probably you know in our vocabulary that week. You know, do you Glam remember Nation. I did I did the one Glam Nation show where I was pregnant? <laughs> did you have somebody somebody's love child? I had, who, did you, I who did you give birth to at one point? I was, I was Jamie Crackpipe and I had a, an ankle monitor on and a white dress with this huge baby bump and a fake cigarette. And I did cherry bomb. And I don't remember how that happened, but it did. Wow. Thank you for remembering that. Yeah. I, I, does anybody have the videotape? Let's go to the videotape. How about the clip? <laughs> that would be nice. Oh, so, so glam nation. I, I, and just to go a little bit dip our toe into the past just a little bit because I do remember us doing a few late night shows. You actually had a battle with an imaginary chihuahua at one point. And I think that was oh. on Greg Kilburn and, and you can go on YouTube and you can find it. You battle a, a stuffed toy. Am, am I right? It's okay. <laughs> and who were you? I think you were, you're going to be I Hilton at that point. Paris because, Hilton. Because it, there was a time that where you were Brittany and then Brittany morphed into Paris Hilton. Paris. And then everybody went psycho and nuts. And then you decided to go to Los Angeles and become you know, <laughs> a comedian yourself. <laughs> well, I, because I, I think that that's sort of the, the, the natural path of the comedian is like things get so unbelievably crazy in your life that you go, okay, now I got to make a joke about this or I don't know. But so we did a, I remember that bit was, it was uh, Paris Hilton and I had the fake dog and I did it in the live Alice show too, uh, to Beverly Hills. I wish I was born in Beverly Hills. Okay. In and, the live um, show, but I think we did it. Um, Sunset babies all got rabies. That was the, that was the line that Alice said, Hey, that may, the, maybe that works. And that was, that was that, that uh, was yeah, it, that it was, was late, late show or with with was it with Kilburn or was it with it, um, it was uh who's that charming guy with the Scottish accent? Again, let's go to the videotape. We have no videotape, but okay, good. <laughs> um, but he was yeah, he I think it was Kilburn or, or somebody like that, but I remember doing it and uh oh man, the thrashing around. You guys remember in um I think it's Naked Gun where they have the fight and the guy throws the towel at him and he's whoa. <laughs> And he fights the towel. Um, <laughs> Just to show you that we're live. In my hair. We're live. Um, but he like fights the towel. That was sort of like the impetus for that fight sequence. So I had to make a fake dog look like it was killing me. And so I just came on and petted it. And then I had to attack the jugular. And I had a blood spurt thing in my hand that would just spray everywhere. Yeah. And people would just eat. I remember the... Doesn't the, read. Blood spit doesn't, doesn't read. Doesn't read. <laughs> hey, what the crew guys, though, this is the best part. So the crew guys had to play paparazzi. I don't know if you remember this. And and I would get attacked by the dog and the blood would go everywhere. And I would do full prat falls. Like I'm five, eight, almost five, nine. And then in heels, a solid six foot. And Damn. so I go, Whoa. So am I. So am I, by the way. Toy, toy. <laughs> and I would smash down on the ground and kick around. There's blood and the crew guys would come out and take pictures, but they're falling on their faces in this fake blood constantly just slipping yeah. and falling. And nobody would tell me Calico, like maybe just not an entire gallon of blood per show because I was just like living my best life. I still have that problem today because your dad always wants fake blood and with the fake blood, Fake blood. Why did fake I go to blood. an English accent I don't know. for that? I don't but know. He, like we do this, we do man behind the mask and, and bougie gets killed and you know, and, and by, by our tech. Oops, shit. Yeah. Cats out of the bag. Oh, and no. it's not, you know, Jason, Jason kills bougie every single night. And, uh, and there's fake blood and I slip on it when I go up on that castle every night. But for those of you that are just, you know, imagine it in your head and haven't seen an Alice Cooper show, you just got to go and see the, the new castle, the rock castle show. How about that for a shameless plug for the new tour? When we finally go out on tour, 2024. When it happens, it's going to be great. <laughs> 2024.
<laughs> the return. The legacy. So um, we we wrapped up Clam Nation in a nice little bow. And sort of if anybody wants to go check out uh, some history about Glam Nation, it, it pretty much was a fun band. It was all about the fun. All it about was the so fun. And we we I just found uh, cleaning out my office. Uh, you guys had put out a CD. This is when CD burners were like the thing. And you guys put out the live and saucy bootleg. Live and saucy. <laughs> and yeah. I found it. I found it in my car. I was like, yeah. oh, and I listened yeah. to it. And it was so great just to hear the shtick. And the songs were fine, but you're, you're <sighs> in between like emceeing was probably like we burned dozens dozens of copies I tell i'm you. talking about <laughs> you guys made dozens of those yeah we did <laughs> but then you went on to actually take the performance and the theater if you will of the band and raise it up a notch with bisto blanco and you've been doing it you've been a uh i want to say co founding member you and chuck co-founded there uh, there's the boys and girl chuck and chris latham the guitar player brother latham brother latham yes the guy with the pick in his mouth yeah he uh they originally founded uh this sucker and then uh the uh vh1 behind the music version is um he really <laughs> they, they started writing songs and uh i think he had had me in his mind as like kind of like a cool like m more of a visual uh, aspect he knew I could sing and and I was singing on the first record and everything and right. um so we did uh our first run and I sort of got my feet wet a little up to the ankles you know I I did what I knew I could do but not too much more because I I just really didn't know my place yet I wasn't super confident this wasn't like quote unquote my band right. uh yet and then um <laughs> the master plan yeah <laughs> <laughs> but um but then i you know we took a step away and did the second record and then when we went back out on tour uh he really let the uh the leash go and okay. he just was kind of like well let's just see what what happens let's see what you do and i don't i honestly can't say that it's not genetic or it's not like a bloodborne disease um <laughs> but something happened and it wasn't Alice. It wasn't um, a facsimile of trying to emulate anything like that. It was just everything that was not permitted uh, right. on an Alice show. The things that I would have impulses to do, but I was like, oh no, you know, that's this is Alice's show. And I'm not going to take that big of a, a, a step forward and, and do that. But I had the permission to try. And so I didn't even know that this creature that is in those photos now, is even this existed. creature Motor Queen or is it uh, Machine Girl? What or is it a metamorphosis of Calico? <laughs> I mean, I, I obviously uh, Vic, our, our producer, is very adamant on saying the Machine Girl because he uses three exclamation points. But I think it, yeah. Well, <laughs> I think it it really is like it it is a comic book character. I mean, you take one look at whatever that thing is that that kind of came out of me and. It's uh, it began looking kind of like Barbarella, and that was the Motor Queen. That that one was like kind of the cheerleader, you know, the right on, right on kind of like thing. And then, um, you know, I think I definitely took a, a page out of out of the Alice book where this this creature is gonna evolve. It's gonna change, and no it's doubt. gonna get weirder. So it started off as like a Motor Queen, like the right on kind of you know flag girl. And then it got weirder and darker and it became the machine girl. And all of a sudden I had this like arm cannon and like was allowed to explore that. And then like now it's morphing into like, you know, a Mad Max overlord sort of thing. And I, yeah. I'm just letting it go where it goes. But I at least twice a show, you know, when you have that moment where you're facing the crowd and you're doing your thing and then you turn around, and you go, what am I doing? <laughs> I every think night I for you, me. Every night for you. I, <laughs> I like. I think I sent you a picture where I'm bent over the like backwards over the uh, the riser on a bisto thing, and I remember in that moment thinking, "What am I doing?" <laughs> <laughs> when did I mean? Could this character, which character first uh, introduced the bat 
and, and we'll talk about the bat because there's huge controversy about what happened with the with, you got the Bisto bat, the Bisto club of loyalty. What is this thing that you have and which character introduced it to your show? The loyal beasts. Um, they are unbelievable. And, and actually they are the ones that like sort of like made this into like legendary myth, <laughs> legendary Bisto. Um, the motor queen, Chuck made me this bat. And it had these big spikes coming out of it. I honestly put, think it was it was uh, Warren Warren T. Our, our, oh, did our he? Tick. I think I, I think he's taking credit for that. I, I, That's I'm, okay. I want to have Chuck on the show so he can contradict everything you're saying. But at one, at one point, I definitely do. <laughs> so, to my knowledge, I was handed the bat by Chuck. Okay. And uh, um, so, I just he says use it or don't use it. I don't know if it's going to fit what you're doing, but explain what the bat was. What did it look like? So it's a it's a like a sawed off Louisville slugger, and it's real. It's not like hollow or fake or anything like that. It's it's a good hefty piece of equipment, and it's got real bolts. It's a weapon. It's, I mean, a, it's weapon. a weapon. Yeah. yeah. Um, funny story. They when we were playing the whiskey in the middle of the show, the security guard tried to come and take it away from me, and I was like, <laughs> he goes, "You can't have that on stage." I go, "Come on." Come take it. Well, you've done many it. European tours. You've done um, a lot of going overseas back and forth. How do you check that? Is that a carry on? Is it? Uh... <laughs> we should write uh, a manual for any show that has any sort of theatrics, like a guillotine. Do you check it? <laughs> Can we fit it in the overhead compartment? Uh, yeah, a, a fake bullet belt. Do you check it? <laughs> Um, <laughs> check or not to check. So, to check or uh, not to check. So what happens with this bat? It's in the show. It's it's used nightly. It's basically as famous as the drummer because you've had uh, yes. a lot of drummers too. We have indeed. <laughs> um, so many great stories. But um, so this bat in particular, uh, I kind of grew to use it as a little bit of a crutch. And you know, like the story of the red toe shoes. I don't know. You've got a daughter. And I've heard this story a million times where I'll ask her. This, this girl's a terrible dancer in the book. And then this guy gives her these red toe shoes and all of a sudden she's incredible. And then he goes, those toe shoes weren't magical at all. You had the talent all the time. So Chuck made me this bat and I, it was a crutch. I was like, yeah. And I felt so powerful with it and I, whatever. And then I gave it a name. Her name was Suzanne. And, okay. uh, uh, after a Weezer song, and it's a. Uh, did it night. look like a Suzanne to you, or was the bat it just did. someone? No, it it yeah. did. It's little Susie Q, she was so <laughs> cute. Um, because it was not the full size; it was this like this like chunker shot, like sawed off bat, and so she had to have a cute name. But um, it got taken at a show, I believe, it was in Colorado. Uh, after the show, I set it on top of the road case. And I turn around to talk to somebody, great show, blah, blah, blah. And I go, oh, thank you. I'm drying off. And I turn around and it's gone. Now, I'm not you. I've had this bat. Missing. Oh, yeah. Oh. I've had this bat since we started this. And it's my little red toe shoes where I'm going, You're where freaking. is it? Yeah. Well, I'm freaking out. Oh. And, and I go, oh, oh, my God, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? And uh, I thought, oh, somebody must have put it away. And so I looked and then I asked everybody and they go, no, it's, it was right there. So somebody snatched it uh, and I'm so embarrassed, but I fully got, I was like emo. I got on the bus and we were driving away and I was like, bad. dude, the, the, the uh, Instagram and Facebook texts and please, I guess, please for the release of Susan, you should have had an Amber alert out for it, by the way. I know, um, right? But the please and the wording of the, of, I, I thought it was heartfelt and, and, like borderline psychotic. Yeah, that's what I do best. <laughs> if, if you were making a calico clone, just make sure it's equal parts heartfelt and psychotic. Um, but I don't really do per like I don't relit personal stuff really too deeply on on uh, social media so much as you know if, if it's not making you laugh, I don't really understand why. Um, but that was one of those moments where I'm like, oh my gosh, I am a basic biatch, and I'm going to put. <laughs> A post out that's like, listen, I lost. You better return this, you <laughs> son of a. <laughs> to wrap it up, was Susan ever returned? No, but this is where the loyal beasts come in, and it was unbelievable. These um, are your fans, the loyal beasts. Yeah. Beast Blanco fans are loyal beasts. Loyal beasts, and they, right. um, 
we we did a run after that and every show somebody would bring me a handmade replica of Suzanne and it had their little personal touches on it some people went creative some people tried to do an exact replica but I ended up with like 20 bats and <laughs> it was the sweetest thing I mean like I got a little choked up because it was just like every show somebody would go I made this for you I know how hard it is to make like yeah you know, a pie, I know. let alone a, a pie that you people. microwave, right? A microwave pie. I know that stuff is difficult. Those are the hardest. I know. Well, did you ever get my uh, paper mache bat that I made for you? Cause yeah, I, first I decoupaged it and then, and then I, and I, <laughs> and I wrapped it in a macrame. It's and it made was like, out of like, like tears. tampons and candy wrappers Here and, you go. And, and tears too. And tears to, to hold it together. <laughs> Well, hell, talk about, I, I want to shift now because I think we've covered those bases pretty well. We've closed the book, hopefully, on the on the uh, Susan the Bat. Mm. The Bat's gone. You know, and the person out there could be watching this podcast right now. They could be watching the podcast right now. The person could be in this very room. Ah. <laughs> um, um, the lean. Can I have some more wine, baby? It is wine time for me. I'm going to make Calico really jealous. I know. Thank you. I'll get there. I'll mature to drinking wine at 8.30 in the morning. Not yet, well, but I'll get there. It's, well, dude, it's, yeah, the quarantine is still young. As we're, still, mm -hmm. we're still in this honeymoon period, I think. People it's are cute. still like, yeah. yeah, everyone's like, oh, you know, they're posting up videos like, I'm still, I'm working out in my house. I never knew there was so much stuff to walk around and clean. But, you know, you wait. Three it's already driving me crazy. It's already driving me crazy. Where I, How do you find so much to do in your house? Like, I have a house full of people, and I'm going, well, I'm going to climb the walls. <laughs> you went from one psychotic situation to another, which is acting. Um, what's it like to, because I've seen you, Callie, in... Um, multiple TV shows, sometimes ones that you haven't even told me you're going to be on. I just see it and it's like, oh, there's Callie. But <laughs> I want to say that uh, me and you got our big break. Oh, hold on. That's a little bit later, though. Thank you very much, Vic. That, we're going to talk about that. It is a red later. carpet, though, so I do see the... Or a pink carpet. We'll, we'll oh. talk about that in just a little bit. But I really do think that our first big break in the movie biz, me and you had it at the same time. I really do. Okay. I think because I had the soundtrack... And you were in the movie. And I want to say it was, um, oh my gosh, I had it all right. It was it was the name of a guy. It was called Whore Fest, or I, I wrote the song. <laughs> look at that look. That's the look that I wanted. That's money. People watching on the, uh, <laughs> just listening on their podcast, you got to go to, to YouTube and watch it. What was that um, called? French's? French's? Fry, fry no, I fest? remember. Okay. It was called. It was called Scarlet Fries Junk Food Horror Fest. And your first debut and As my first soundtrack, lead soundtrack of the show. We did that together. That's right. Um, so the guy had approached me. I I had just, like, I think I just graduated, like, high school or just done, like, one year of the tour. It was, it was in my very late teens. I think it came out on Laserdisc. That was There's it. That was, that was the, the only format I think that it came out. I think Beta Max and Laser. Yeah, you can get the soundtrack on eight track if you if you look hard <laughs> enough. But uh, so, so what happened right out of school? So, yeah, the guy had said um, I'd never done any film before, and and the guy says, hey, uh, you know, do you want to do this bit? It's this like crack addict, whatever. And I was like, oh yeah, totally. And so I did it, and it filmed in Phoenix, and I was like, okay, and I, you know, I have. You absolutely have to do everything um, that comes your way, except for naked stuff. Um, hey, good advice, girls and boys. You, and boys. Yeah. Um, because it, it really does give you a barometer now that I direct and produce stuff where I go, you start learning right there. Your very hardest lessons, your very first things where you go, I definitely want to do that. And I definitely don't want to do that, but it was great. I mean, I, I did the, the bit. Um, it was like, I think 30 seconds of a thing. And I, I did my little crack addict bit and I beat some guy to death with the tire iron. 
Yeah. Well, no, um, natural. Natural. Which is sort of, yeah, like yeah. natural. I think it's so funny. So calico. Like, it's, just, it's, it's, it's just. Oh. How, pause on this. How did this happen? Because I am, and you can attest to this, I am, I'm so nice. Yeah. Definitely and like, she is. So sweet. You will and- stop it. Well, just like your dad, you're, you're going to stop and talk, sign the autograph, say hello, and then, you know, well, he'll go to, and- room, you'll go into your room. <laughs> right. I'll cut my bunk. But uh, I I consistently get these these jobs, I think, because it's so easy to access. I'm like, rainbows and kittens. And then you give me a bat or a tire iron, and I'm like, bah! Yeah, so I saw I you really- as a complete psycho in, uh, I think it was Hawaii Five O, the TV yeah. show. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and that crack act, crack, I can't say crack addict. What a great times. name for a book, crack act. Crack act. Ah, there it is. Got a snap just, to it. Yeah, we've just uh, planted the seed for Calico's up and coming novel. Crack it. <laughs> Crack it. So the thing is, you've gotten these roles, but then you've again sort of evolved, just like you have all the way from Glam Nation through Bisto <laughs> through Performer Bows. You've evolved into now you're directing and you're writing comedy commercials all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff when did you make that next step up um i think like anybody nowadays that that does their own content i mean you're doing it and and um people are enjoying it and i think uh you have to kind of do the time under the man for a little bit like at least like 10 years of like like trying to get the jobs that you really want and trying to like battle out, you know, 20,000 actresses. Cause that, this is really how it works. Um, for Hawaii Five O, let's say for instance, um, the role goes out for Jane Miller, which is the, the girl that I played and 20,000 people will submit. Then those interns have got to go through and they know what the show's looking for and they'll pick 20 of us. So, so right. 20 out of 20, the, the odds are like unreal. And so then they bring you in, then you audition. And then if they like you, you get a callback and it's three of you. And then out of the three of you, then producers will like pour over your tapes and everything. And then they'll pick one of you. So, I mean, if I do four auditions a week, I'm so proud of myself because I'm somehow rising above, you know, just from work alone, but it's hard. And it really does grind on your gears where you're like, Oh, how am I working so hard? And like one out of every hundred auditions, you're like, yes. So you start creating your own content and you start saying, Hey, why don't I become the guy instead of trying to, to do what the get in the guy's thing? Why don't I be the guy? Yeah. So I'll be the driver. I'll be the, I drive this crazy bus. So, um, just started doing, uh, competitions, commercial comedy competitions where it was like, um, for $500, give us your funniest idea for a dating app and, and tape it. And so we grab a couple actor friends, you know, some guy that knows how to edit on iMovie and right. threw something together and we turned it in and go, Oh, that was so fun. And we won. Wow. So okay. we got a bigger group of friends together and started getting bigger and bigger. And then before you know it, it's like, there's this production company and you know, people that I literally, I swear to you, Ryan, people I auditioned for, are auditioning for me. Oh, it like sweet I, revenge. it's so good. Uh, you, and, you know, hello, hello, welcome. <laughs> it must be so nice because you have to be is. nice to them, of course. But there's of a course. little thing, in, you know. There's a little sign you're going to just. Nah. Well, and then the tables can can flip absolutely again. I mean, there's there's been one threefold where uh, I did a Nickelodeon show called Henry Danger. Yeah, and. Uh, one of the guys that got cast with me, um, I'd seen him out in different auditions and stuff like that. And we get cast together and, um, you know, we were cool. And then I get a call for a movie and he's the casting director for the movie and I don't get the job. And then I put a casting out for a commercial and he shows up and he didn't get the job. Ah, No, really, but if he was the best for it, it really, you really have to, um, get the best job to the best man. I, I, I I know, but at the same time I've had in my personal experience, I've had some guys that are like kind of little, some rocker guys in bands that, you know, have been a little bit standoffish to me in the clubs back Uh, in the day. You know, they've been a little bit, I, he doesn't, nah, nah, he's, he's, he, he, 
doesn't really play all he's not that 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 good. Okay, he's not that good. Okay. okay. But then but then, you know, years later, fast forward mm-hmm. years later, I'm not gonna drop any names, but they call to be on the guest list. Weird. Oh, I heard That's you playing weird. the Greek theater. You're playing the Greek theater. Can I get it? Can I get it on plus ten? <laughs> and of course, I'm. You know, dude, isn't that always the way? It's the people you like are like, oh no, like we'll we'll just meet you out for dinner afterwards. And then the crazy people are like, can I get twenty one after show passes? You're like, That's you literally the reason just why we like me. them. <laughs> yes, we like our friends. That's because they don't. You know what? I always say. It's mm-hmm. a fine line between, you know, using that card mm-hmm. and you abusing that card. That's yeah, all. it's a good note yeah. to take for everyone. Um, just in general in life, you know what I mean? Like there's going to be friends of yours that like, you know, how many friends of mine are chefs or massage therapists or whatever? And I'm not like, yo, can you rub on me? Like, that's your job, dude. Like, you know, right. it's like so. But, you know, imagine if you will, you know, I see a young Ryan Roxy in the club, like taking in the scope and having like, you know, the guys be like, yeah, okay, kid. Right. And, and then that coming around, but there is nothing more. um, I don't know if it's vindicating or upsetting where I'll meet somebody as Calico, no last name, nothing. Oh, this is my friend Calico. Oh, Hey, nice to meet you. And I go, Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm an actor. I do this and that. Okay. That's great. And then all of a sudden, (laughs) The last name comes in. Is it? Oh, she's Alice's daughter. Eee. Oh my God! Yeah. Hi. You get you get last name. Uh, you get last name treatment sometimes. Yeah. I don't because nobody has the last name Roxy <laughs> on the first of a line. Yes. The first line, and I feel that my kids will probably change their names afterwards <laughs> out of pure embarrassment. But Losing I am a the, legacy. I will only be the first and only of the Roxies. <laughs> the shortest the, like family it tree. Ends here. The stump. <laughs> My family tree is just like a stump. Flip. <laughs> no, we'll see. I think that you know what? They'll wise up. They'll say, you know what? Because I always say, I tell my kids, I go, you be whatever you want. You know, in fact, I, you call yourself whatever you want. My my daughter, Natasha Grace. She goes by Grace, Gracie, and G. You know, this is never Natasha Grace. It's just always one of those others. Calico. I right. love the name. Obviously, I wanted to have. I love the name. I wanted the name California for a kid. Do you think Calico, how did that name come about? Do you ever ask your parents about? Yeah, of course. We we actually just talked about this in our, uh, in our stuck together family dinner last night. Oh, um, we, uh, not? No, no, not. We've been eating outside and, and uh, my dad was like, Hey, did any of you guys ever want to be called something else? And we, we went, what? And they're like, well, you know, like when you're growing up and you have like your, your, your kid crisis and you're like, we all have really unique names. You know, my name's Calico. My brother's name is Dashiell and my sister is Sonora. And I felt like the biggest idiot because we went around the table and Sonora's like, I just wanted a name like, like Katie, you know, like something cute and whatever. And it went around the table and it got, you know, to Dash and he was like, yeah. He's like, I wanted to be like, you know, like Ken, you know, like something like strong and Everybody, my mom was like, oh, I wanted to be, uh, was it Angela? And I'm looking around the table and it gets to me. And I felt bad being like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Completely content. Yeah. No, your name kicks ass. What if you would have had, just, just this is a, you know, a total um, hypothesis. What if you would have had a brother or sister named Mistake? Do you think they would have been like, uh, my, I don't think I would have wanted to be called I could have said no, but it would have been mistake. <laughs> mistake with like a Q. Mistake. Mist- is it mystique? Mistake. <laughs> mystique or mistake? I'm not sure. That would not be good. <laughs> Shit, Enough of the kids' names. All right. We're moving on. You're done. So, no, because what our illustrious producer Vic did put up was another project that we have some sort of uh, similarity, some sort of bond to, because we just were at a New York uh, film opening for both uh, your video, which was called Cold Cold Coffin, and the movie that I appeared in called uh, Live from the AstroTurf. And we there was a double um, 
a double film premiere and stuff. And that was a really fun night because Dennis Dunaway got you to be in his cold, cold coffin video through a Kickstarter campaign, I might add. Yeah. And you played his wife. Yes, I did. <laughs> okay. Yes, I did. Do tell. I thought it was a brilliant idea. I mean, first of all, I have a love for a narrative music video and it's really rarely do people take the time to do it anymore because it's so cost effective to just do, you know, a bunch of live shots and then like, you know, cool, weird imagery. And it works because people's attention spans are so short. They're like, okay, yeah, that's rad. And there's a place for it. I mean, especially if you want to do a lyric video or whatever, like that you should do that. Um, but I've always been super passionate about, um, about the narrative, um, you know, I've, I've always uh, loved going back and seeing those narrative videos that like you just go, oh, man, when you were a kid, that was like everything. And um, so when Dennis was like, I want to do this like short film, it was such a cool idea. He says, so I'm cryogenically frozen and you're a gold digger. And then when I wake up, you're all old and then you die instead. And I'm like, ah, a revenge story. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, and I think it's so cool because the legacy is there, you know, um, the fans that that uh, join the Kickstarter and the fans that know sort of our relationship and, and you know, his relationship to my dad. Um, I think that was a really cool sort of like uh, breadcrumb sort of a ah, thing. Um, nice, nice plug to your dad's new record, too, as well. Man, you're good. You're good uh, at yeah. this. I've been doing this a little. You didn't time. even mean to do it, did you? I did. <laughs> oh, oh, wow! Well, well calculated. But, uh, well played. I am Cersei Lannister, except without the brother sexing. Um, <laughs> but uh, thank you. Uh, but no, so we we shot it, and and the shots were so cool, and it was in this big old castle in upstate New York, and we got to stay there, and they That's gave cool. me like this like princess suite that like overlooked the thing, and and this is my life. Airbnb. That sometimes I th I think it was like Castle BNB. Like yeah, you know, Castle, rent, it's, rent it's a, one of the niche sort yeah. of apps that you can you know rent rent a fishing boat, rent a castle. <laughs> yeah, and, I like uh, yacht yacht BNB. Why BNB? Yacht B Why BNB? See, go now. Sign yeah. off. Make this happen. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so uh, you know, getting to live in a castle, it, it's one of the so many times in my life. You know, like from being a touring musician where you wake up and you're like, where is this? Where am I? What is this? And so I was sleeping after the first night of shooting and I woke up and I'm in a tower, like a, like a princess tower. And I'm going, what is this? And it was so great. All the cast and crew stayed on set. We filmed for like two, three days. It was so rad. And there's just everywhere is bizarre stuff like a, frozen cryogenic coffin in this room and like it's pretty standard issue for me but i was like all right this feels good and uh it went so smooth um and marrying dennis was one of the funniest things because you know i've been privy to so many great stories of them as not just bandmates but kids right. you know my dad just told a story last night of uh this guy that was picking on him and dennis in uh junior high and dennis finally had enough and he punched this guy in the stomach and Dennis's hand just disappeared in this guy's stomach. And he was like, ho, 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 you're cool. And like, they were cool with the guy from then on. But so all these stories are in my head and I'm holding his hands. And, you know, it's a fake marrying anybody on TV or and it, it's, it's just awkward. So as I was do, that your I, first I, fake marriage or was that? Um... <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? No, wait a second. That wasn't even, but that was no script, but that was, I'm, I'm just saying, was that your first fake marriage that you've ever been in a TV show filmed or, you know, you've obviously um, been, I've seen you as a psychopath in a lot of different roles, but yeah, what, I got fake I mean, married. Uh, I got fake married on a um, a soap opera. Wow. I did a soap opera called Bloomers. Um, but I also that was Damn. the first time I ever had to, and this the, it still has yet to come out this season of it. But um, had to have a fake doing it session, and that was Eww. a trip. But it's all clothed. You're all clothed. But it was like 
this like quickie thing in a comedy. So are it's you funny. In, are you in nudie? Out? No, is it sheer things. You're in total clothes. So they no, just no, CGI in- the clothes off, or no, no, it work? no. It's, it, this was because uh, I didn't expect it. I knew it was in the script. I just didn't look close enough, and and it's good because we walked on set. And it's a comedy. So it's like more of like um, always sunny in Philadelphia type of show. Yeah. And so you're in full clothes in a broom closet. And the whole thing is a comedy bit where you're trying to stay quiet and brooms are falling and things are happening. So it was, but still, I don't, I know this guy. We've been together for two seasons now. We play ex-boyfriend and ex-girlfriend. And there is nothing that will, that will alter that friendship quicker then you're like, oh, bro, did you hear about this? And oh, did you see that meme, whatever? And they're like, action. And you're like, Eesh. now I'm supposed to be acting like I'm doing it. You oh, know, some guy oh. I'm just friends with. Yeah. And I, I seriously you. had like a like the crying game moment. Like I got home and I was like, what happened? What have I done? No. No, but there's there's, there's no so more funny. video girls. There's no more video girls in my videos from now on. You know, I'm married now with Bianca. So she's not, she, there's, there's, there's no video girls. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I tried to have. There was one video girl on my solo album that that basically, you know, she she did a really good job. She was a dancer. She did a lot of things for. Um, oh, cool. Uh, you know, it was it was for one of the tracks off off my solo record, and and she <laughs> got put a smile on my face, and it put it didn't put a smile on Bianca's face to see the, the dancer that was on there. So Copy. yeah, my days of video chicks were, are, are, are over. Well, see, this is and there was no interaction do. between us as well. She was, she, she was like social distancing me you know, <laughs> before the, it was cool before it was even a thing. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, I think if you have a girl in your band and that girl is like always armed with yeah. stuff, everybody's with cool. They're yeah. just like, Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, our listeners will definitely have to go and check, go down the uh, Calico Cooper rabbit hole. Um, I'm going to now sort of slowly wind it down because we've been, I, I always think that these things are going to go, you know, do, will we have enough to talk about? Will there be enough to like actually say, well, and then it's like, we're going over, it, you know, when you and I talk though, in real life, it goes on for like eight plus hours. So yeah, but it, usually those hours are between two and four in the morning Correct. on the tour bus. Correct. We've, and I'm like this. You know another thing. We had a You're little crazy. Bit of that. I'll just tell you about some music. You never heard it. No, that's true. We we we've 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 had late night conversations on the bus. We've had uh Spotify roulette, which is always fun to play. Is I, I love good. playing that with you and Kyler. If anyone doesn't know about Spotify roulette, what you do is you just take one a simple iPhone and then you sign on to Spotify and you sort of have your this is your song that you want to play for everyone else everyone listens to it then the phone gets passed to the next person there's so many good songs i've got from that like stuff i've never heard of and like you know these really cool like um like euro pop punk bands and i I love them now all because of spotify roulette there you go so i think what we've learned today is that uh we, we could all come together, whether you're a loyal beast or you're part of the Roxy Guitar Army. You can be one. You can be both, you know, and everyone can just get along. A little Rodney King there. Um, <laughs> Calico has a rich history, enough to, I think, be deemed worthy of being in the trenches. She's been in the trenches. She's obviously climbed her way out of the trenches with a bat. And she is working her way through all these different twists and turns of her career um, worthy of coming back on the show. Will you come back? Can I get a verbal, I verbal would, agreement? <laughs> a verbal letter of intent? Yes. I would <laughs> love to come back. Cool. Well, in that case, I will, before I open it up and I sort of close up the uh, podcast version of in the trenches, I would like to sort of ask where people could get in touch with you. Cause everyone knows if they're going to get in touch with me, um, it's at Ryan Roxy on Instagram, but what's your social media of choice, Kelly? So I am really a, I'm an Instagram lady too. Um, I think sometimes I get, uh, you know, the Facebook messenger, there's so many messages and I, and I don't understand the, the platform as well, but, um, you can definitely get in touch with me at, um, my Instagram. I don't have a private account. You what can just say, Hey, at it's Calico Cooper at Calico Cooper. All right. There it is. Look at that. Tried to keep it. Thank you, Vic. How professional is that, Vic? Good job, So good. You got the guy, man. But I think they're both all lower caps. Uh, Can you redo that? (laughs) It's okay. (laughs) God is in the details, darling. 
Thank you so much for coming on in the trenches, Calico Cooper. I'm going to open this forum up now for some okay. questions from people, if that's okay with you. Totally. Um, I think Robert Schultz, I, I, I have the hardest time saying his last name, Schultz, is there. He wants to hey, ask you. got it right this level. time. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Calico. How y'all doing today? Hey, Rob. Y'all doing all right? I'm doing so good. I'm chilling in the office. My dog is looking at me funny. It couldn't be better. <laughs> Right on. It's about the same here. <laughs> Nash <laughs> Vegas is same. Nash Vegas is shut down. <laughs> yep, clipped. Yep, but we're having we're having a good time at home. Good. Nice product branding too, because I didn't notice it from the Gibson shirt, but the Gibson headstock. Wow, that really uh, double branding. Uh, good job, man. So <laughs> uh, this is a one of a kind. So. Uh, Ooh. Uh, you've become quite familiar with uh, one of a kinds. So <laughs> Let, let's see it. Let, yeah, Robert. Actually, for those of you that are watching on the YouTube feed, Robert is the man that has made not just my three thirty five, but he's also made the Glammy three thirty nine Roxy Burst guitar. And there it is. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, did you have is, a question this, for Cali? Uh, actually, no. I keep up with her quite well. It's kind of hard to ask her questions. <laughs> That's perfect for a Q and A session. Then I think. you know what I like it. He's it like, Girl, I just wanted to see you. I have to be honest. That's it. Come here. That's it. You know, it was it was the great, uh, probably one of the best experiences I had was uh, was the Goon Squad show that we did in Memphis, and uh, just getting the chance to hang out with Calico, and of course, you know, the rest of the band is a is a band because anytime y'all are in town, we we try to get together and do our thing, you know, and, uh, you know, I feel, I feel kind of fortunate. I'm not sure, but, uh, I may have been the only person to ever sit in for Glenn. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. yeah. Surrender. May, right? it, may it be noted. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. That was a blast. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. uh, you know, do you know yeah, what's build cool guitars, is think, but play drums. <laughs> I think getting to do those goon squad shows is, is, um, is super cool because you can tell we all actually love this. It's not yeah. just like somebody's throwing cash and you're like, I guess we'll put something together. It's like there's like thought put into it. You can tell people are having fun. And I think that you can read authenticity like even in a jam if a band's like. Absolutely. Ugh. Or if a band's like, yeah. <laughs> and, and the thing Absolutely. is, we actually did really consider calling the band name Calico and the rest of the guys. You know, because of that. <laughs> thank you for that. That would have been perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Rob, for coming on. I'm going to get a couple more people on before we uh, Thanks, have to sign to off. You. I don't want to take too much of Calico's time because she needs to go back to her quarantine. She has to go back to her I isolation. <laughs> but who should we bring on? Oh, there's oh, Anna. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Hi, hey, Anna. Calico. Man, this Hello. is so fun. Everyone is coming together on this crazy podcast thing. It's just a bunch of freaks enjoying our time together. Don't you I think? I love it. I love I it as love well. It. Calico, here's the thing. You are one of the super cool chicks out there. You know, never enough of us freaks. Uh, so I dig <laughs> your work a lot. Here's the question. Um, what makes guys freak out the most? The white contact lenses, the zombie ones, the bat, or your vocals? It's like, pick one. I 100% it's uh, the vocals because ah, I think okay. you get you get to two different ones of there's people that scream and there's people that sing and then you get me who's right in the middle and if you can have your foot on somebody's chest and a bat and be able to hold that note I think guys go okay, okay. back it off I know I know <laughs> the feeling totally so huge respect you to that awesome. Hope you're well Dude, and have fun so during good. that time. Awesome seeing you, Calico. Love you. Good to see you. Love you too. Thank you, Anna. That was see, Anna is our like that's our model guest. Come on, Love her. ask an amazing question, get an amazing answer, and then she's like, I'm out. Bye. I love it. Mic she dropped drop. deuces. She's all boop later. <laughs> awesome. Well, who we got on? Oh, there you I go. Got Oh man, Hi. there you are following the CD, CCD. I'm telling you, it's there you are. are it's you bad. in the emergency room right now? Are you working? No, right now, I work in a surgical center. Oh wow! Okay. So yeah. Damn man. So 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 is this is this the C word or is this just another Tuesday for you right now going into surgery? This is another just another day. Okay. We have well, to be in complete PPE. Every day. I have to say, you have got some gorgeous eyes. I can see them. They're like perfectly set <laughs> by the. 
Well, hey, thank Melanie. you. Are y'all well? Y'all are all doing good? Yeah, doing really yeah. good. Doing really good. Thank you for doing everything that you're doing, really. Thank you so much. Well, thank what if she you. was it's, doing it's, like it's, a breast it's, enlargement right now? Thank you. Thank, thank you for that, that too. I need you your number. <laughs> no. <laughs> Melanie, do you have a wait? I wanted to ask, did she have but a question? Up, so. <laughs> <laughs> Melanie, did you have a question for Calico? No, I was just checking on y'all. You know, Vic's going to put me in here so I can say hi. Oh, man. Thank you oh, so much for so coming sweet. by. Yeah, all thank right. You so Take much. care of yourself. You. All right. You're the most prepared out of all of us right now. I should be wearing a mask because I'm in my son's room. It smells like old socks. Hey, Federock. Hi. How are you doing? Hi. Hi, Ryan. Hi, Calico. Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> it's, it's so great to have you here in the trenches today. So thank you, Ryan. And uh, I have uh, a question for you. I'm curious to know if you remember the first time uh, you went on stage performing for Alice Cooper were more excited about performing in front of a big crew or uh, performing for Alice Cooper and Alice Cooper band? I think um, I was so nervous of my first show. You know, I had so big shoes to fill because people were looking at me going, is she going to be like Alice? Is she going to be like her mom? And uh, I just felt so many eyes on me in that first show. And uh, when the when the show started, I think I just did what I do best and I just let it rip and just saw what happened. And at the end of it, you know, it's so nice to hear the band say, hey, great job. It is so nice to hear my mom, who I was taking over for, say, great job. But also my dad, who's created this whole world, say, hey, you really nailed it. I went, oh, <laughs> I did it. I did awesome, it. Awesome. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, it's fantastic. I remember I saw you in uh, 2002 in uh, Brescia, Italy, and uh, you were so confident. Uh, I did you so much. Oh, thank it you so, so much. I, uh, I definitely, um, I think I'm more confident on stage than I am anywhere else because there you feel like, powerful and safe and protected yeah. and anything you do is right but then off stage i'm like <laughs> <laughs> okay you can That's thank better rock you can thank her right now because she's been pushing out the uh podcast all day ever since we introduced it on sunday you've been doing a great job of promoting it and getting dm dming people that you shouldn't have dm'd yeah, yeah. but you did it anyway thank you That's very much great. for promoting thank and you know what you, so you just proved you just helped make this our top viewed uh, live stream podcast so far you beat steve stevens you beat Steve well, Stevens. Yeah, 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 don't worry. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so Steve. much. Thank you. Hey. So, Callie, oh, hey, Franky, oh, hey. how are you doing? <laughs> hey, hey, you I'm a, good. You, you have a question for Callie? Yeah, sure. Um, what's what's the one thing on your list that um, you still kind of want to do but haven't gotten around to yet? Like, is there anything that is still, like, top priority, I need to do this before, like, you know? I mean, artistically, I think so, you know, in Bisto, we've been creating these like really cool sort of like almost comic book type characters. And for Bisto, I would love to sort of put that onto film and tell the story of how these things became the way that they were sort of like a Mad Max origin story. Yeah, would that would be to cool. Like and then like in my brain, all of the extras and people in the film are actual fans like loyal beasts so i, I can, I can just see a mirror shot of you like getting the makeup on and it's like changing see now i need you as a script supervisor <laughs> I'm, I'm on i'm down <laughs> awesome perfect well now we've met <laughs> amazing <laughs> Thank you, Franzi, for coming on. As always, she had she had actually another great question for Dennis when Dennis was on as well. So, mm -hmm. thank you again. All right, thank stay you. Stay safe. And uh, Callie, you have done a great job today. I, I I don't even know how to explain it. I mean, it's almost I, I've finished half a bottle of wine so far. So, but you know what? I'm, I think that I do that to people. You do. I, I like encourage. Just my face uh, says drink. <laughs> I've got the face that makes you want to drink wine. I do. I have the fa the voice that makes you want to get wasted. And then also makes your wife want to do lean-ins. Oh, my wife is doing lean-ins. She's right here. She's listening to the whole thing. There, That's the third. 
<laughs> and third time's a charm. Everything is funnier in threes. That's something I learned in the groundlings. You tell a joke once and it fails. All right. You tell it again, people feel really bad for you. And then you tell it a third time and people are like, yeah, confidence. Well, you know, the groundlings is, is actually code word for your dad saying featured member of Saturday Night Live. Right, right. <laughs> Jeez, just so you know. <laughs> do, we ha do we have one more question that we can bring up, Vic? And, and then, hey, whoa, look at that. Beasto yeah. block. Yeah. Da, 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 There's da, da, da. a loyal beast. What's up, Nick? How you doing, hey, brother? Ryan, how you doing? Calico, just wanted Hi. to thank you for the meet and greet in Detroit right before all this broke down. Um, it was great. You did, guys had a fantastic show. Thank you so much. It was so good to see. I mean, really. You guys, that group of people were the last people that we really saw before all of the, the doors shut. And what a group of people, what a show, what, what a crowd, literally. And I would think, what a crowd, what a show. But for real, that was so much fun. There was so much sweat and just yelling. And I love that. And thank you for being yeah. one of those people. Yeah, it was a great show. Question I do have, what do you see yourself doing here in 20 years? Are you going to take the mantle of the Cooper family and take it further? or You know, it, it actually, it's, it's been discussed. And it's something that, like, as new media comes in, we can go so many directions with it. And what do you want to do with the character, with the legacy, like Alice? You know, does it pass like a demon? Does it, you know, there's so many opportunities. And so it's definitely being uh, talked about. And I think that there's, like we were talking in the last question about um, film, I would really love to collaborate on a real Alice film. Like they've been doing for, you know, um, Queen and for uh, Elton and stuff like that. I think that the story of the character Alice has got so much there. And that's where I would want to put my hands in and really tell the story and almost like, have you ever seen the movie, The Cell? The Cell is like a really creepy, like um, it's a like a, almost a David Lynchy type of movie. And I think that okay. that's the direction that it should go. So, I mean, in 20 years, I bet you if it's not me, somebody's gonna tell the Alice story and it's gonna it be- It should be mint. you, Callie. It should be yeah. you for sure. I love it to be you. <laughs> Thank you, Thanks sir. Wow, Nick, thank you very much for that. I, I'm telling you, Callie, you you have started some sort of like frenzy here at the uh, in the trenches <laughs> podcast. No, seriously, there, there's like people that are because I'm reading the comments while you're telling your answers, which are always, you know, heartfelt and and well said, well put. Nothing like what I just said. You you always you're very eloquently, uh, you know, you always eloquently put stuff, and and that's what I. I'm really proud of you, dude. That's all, that's all Thank I got to say. And I, and I can say dude after all this time because we are dudes. Because we are dudes. You're my and, little um, sis. I'm, <laughs> I'm your big bro, you know, and, and we've been through a lot together. Yeah. And, you know, we, we got through this show together. You know, we didn't bring up. There was there was a lot of things we could bring up, but I've gotten a verbal agreement that you'll come back on again. So Absolutely. I I think it's about time that we uh, sort of wrap things up and thank everybody. If you didn't get on the show today, you will definitely get on on the next time. I promise you we're going to be much more live streams uh, in the Trenches podcast because, you know, this is what we're doing right now. This is our reality. Yep. We have everybody has to sort of be on a level playing field. You know, it, you're only as good as your broadband signal, right? That's true. You're only <laughs> These as good days. as the tiny dog with you. Oh, uh, who's that? Gozer. This is, wait a second, the key master or the gatekeeper? This one's the key master. I love it. That's good. <laughs> He's so serious. Or she, I don't know. I can't tell those dogs apart. It's a she. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Look at that. Well, anyway, Calico, thank you so much for coming on the show. Calico Cooper, everybody. If you need to find out more about Calico, at Calico Cooper on Instagram. Um, you guys have been nothing short of fantastic today. Thank um, you, guys. I almost, you know, I want to keep it going, but at the same time, I want to say, you know what? Go out with a bang, and um, let's just say we'll do it again, right? We absolutely will do it again. Yeah. Say hello to the family, and obviously, uh, next time you're on, maybe if we are still in quarantine, we mm -hmm. can uh, bring them in as bit characters. I'll have uh, I'll have them do <clears throat> lean-ins like Bianca. <laughs> yeah. 
my lean in was like dinner's ready that's what my that's name, amazing my she's on. like wrap this up sir thank you <laughs> but wait a second dave spade who's sort of my hero these days with his show lights out oh, he's so like, funny have you been watching that yeah oh my god he's i mean he's so good and do you know him from around phoenix from the I old do. days yeah i do know him from around phoenix and from around, um, you know, like the comedy circuit and stuff. And he is actually that funny. He is so humble and he's really like, I mean, he's hysterical. I just watched the one where he interviews the guys from Tiger King. Yeah, all and, week. Uh, yeah, he's, he, uh, he's gone down to interviewing basically the second <laughs> assistant gaffer. Which has, <laughs> they all have stories where they're like, bro, you yeah. don't even know. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Well, I mean, have you, is that's what you've been doing? Have you been watching, have you been uh, binge watching we, anything? We watched as a family, The Tiger King. And the whole series. The entire series we watched in two days. Uh, all of us smashed up on a couch. And I love looking over at my family and every single one of them's like, I mean, just spellbound <laughs> by what this is going. And my dad, his quote directly is, he goes, I bet you every single one of these people has an Alice Cooper record. <laughs> yeah, he's right. Classic. Yeah, he's right. He's right. You know, the only one that didn't see it is your imaginary brother or sister mistake. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> mistake. <laughs> or mystique. I'm not sure. <laughs> the imaginary brother or sister. Classic. The unwanted Cooper. <laughs> mystique. No. Speaking of the unwanted Coopers, I want to have you all on because you're all wanted on this on this chat board. They love the, they go crazy for Cooper. We're like, the remember, Adams family. You can't Eric hate us. Singer used to go crazy for Cocoa Puffs. These Cuckoo the Rocks Coopers. Guitar Army is crazy for Cuckoo, Cuckoo, Cuckoo Cooper Puffs. <laughs> all right. Enough of my laughing. You're not supposed to laugh when you're drunk on wine. But you know what? <laughs> I don't care anymore. I appreciate you coming on, Calico. I appreciate all you guys for showing up. Thank um, you. Yep. We'll do it again next time. But uh, until next time, this is Ryan Roxy in the trenches with Calico Cooper. Enjoy the ride. Hit it, Vic. <laughs> Trenches with Ryan Roxy.